Okay, so here is the painting I made with the epoxy candy products. I think I'm going to call it Family Road Trip. Here are the epoxy candy products and the epoxy. This is the epoxy candy's Facebook site right here. This is the actual what their website looks like. I'll put the links in the description. And this is the type of epoxy that I use, Pro Marine Supplies. I like it, some people don't, but I'm a big fan of it. So it's worked good for me, and if it keeps working, I'll stick with it. So this is me, I'm the guy talking right here. That's me, I'm Tyler. Here's me smiling ear to ear with my friend Steven in the background. And here's me in a funny shirt at the lake. Man, that was a fun day. That was awesome. Okay, so this basket right here is what the painting's based off of. We took a family road trip, me and my Uncle Dwayne, down to Douglasville, Georgia, to meet up with a long-lost family member, Johnny Carroll. We found him on Ancestry.com. Here's some of the pictures of the Smoky Mountains right here. They were very beautiful. And another picture of the Smoky Mountains. Now here is Johnny Carroll on the left and my Uncle Dwayne Carroll on the right. So it was kind of nice to go down there and talk to him and figure out where our roots are from in Douglasville, Georgia. And then also our home where our family was originally from was actually Walland, Tennessee. So we took a road trip up there also. Not much in Walland. Okay, back to the painting. So this is the formula I use to figure out how much resin I need. These are the products that I use right here. So this is the epoxy candy products right here. They're all kind of there in the picture. And then here's where the video starts of me mixing them up right here. It'll go through and show you each and every color. Okay, so my resin's already mixed up right here. Uh, when you mix your resin, you want to use equal parts of A and B with Pearl Marine Supplies. I generally mix for three to five minutes until consistency gets about where I want it at. You don't really want to mix, you know, too fast with it. Um, if you do, you'll get lots of air bubbles. So kind of just mix it slower, you know, and then always make sure in your container you're scraping the sides. And I kind of use a action of going up and down with it too to kind of make sure that I uh, get it all mixed up. Okay, so the parts of the video that I was, you know, talking about mixing my resin over, um, it shows me adding the pigments to it. So when I add the pigments, I go rather strong on my pigments. Uh, you always, if you use like a tongue depressor, you know, the bigger size, I generally go about three quarters of an inch by about a quarter inch high. I guess you could say that would be the amount of pigment that I use. It varies from time to time also. Okay, so here is the epoxy candy white. And they said one drop per two ounces. So I figured I had about four ounces in here. So I added a couple drops of it. And then I added, you know, accordingly with the others. When it gets to the peacock ink, I did add a little bit extra of that. And then also, you won't see it in this video, but I kind of got in a bind. And I also had to use some of the teal um, out of the package. So uh, one thing about that, that, you know, I know this is a new company and everything. Um, I had to shake it, you know, and you're supposed to shake this stuff really, really good before you start with it, before you put your drops in. Uh, and when I did shake it, you know, I, I took the cap off, everything like that, after I got done shaking it, and then I squeezed it and nothing came out. So I don't know if you want to like prepare yourself, you know, and have all your caps off and everything opened up, ready to go, and then maybe take like a needle and stick down through the top of the hole. I don't know, but that was the only one that did it to me. All the rest were A-OK. -okay. So here it is, it's just showing me again, putting, you know, the additives and the pigment. And then I'm just mixing them all up. So I'm going kind of silent here for a while. Um, there won't be any audio or anything, but the video is still going. Uh, just kind of watch what I do, I guess, and go from there. And then when stuff changes and, you know, I made some adaptations and everything like that, I'll go over it in the video with you and show you kind of what I did. So, all right, here you go. Watch this and uh, enjoy for right now.
Yeah, so I know you're watching me mix up the resin and everything right now, but uh, I'm still doing this voiceover. And I just realized I didn't give you a real good explanation while I'm doing it on the basket. So the basket I saw at the Lokita Inn in Douglasville, Georgia. Um, Georgia's actually a very beautiful state. I like it. There's lots of trees down there. I guess that's why they got Georgia pines. Um, and then I finally ate at a Waffle House, too. Waffle House is kick-ass. Food was nice and cheap, and I don't know. It was pretty good. I had grits, too. Oh, man, grits. And, yeah, they put cheese on them. Mm, grits. Yeah, they were good. Okay. All right, I'm going to quit being a dork. Here you go. Watch me. Oh, yeah, with the basket, I thought it was just a really pretty color palette. So that's kind of like why I went with it. I didn't match it up all the way, but you know what? I still like this painting. Okay, watch me talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so for video purposes, I was mixing the uh, pigments to where you could see them in the camera at. Generally, I add them on top, and the reason why is because sometimes if they're on the bottom and then you don't get it scraped all the way, you don't get them broke up, you'll get little chunks of pigment in your painting. So this stuff actually broke up pretty good, um, but most of the time, like when I mix, I hold it off the side of my table or kind of like over a trash can, so when the pigment powder falls, it kind of falls into that. Um, that's the way I do it. Some people might say it's wrong. You're supposed to put it in first. It's worked for me, so that's kind of why I do it that way. 
Uh, that's just my experience. You know, you might have a different experience. Okay, so I've already got all my epoxy down on here. I put a layer on first, you know, to help make the pigments and the paste and everything like that be able to move. Um, you know, it keeps it rather more fluid to where you can get the stuff instead of like, unless it just, you know, goes right down onto your board. I use wood, so that's what I use. I know some people use canvas, stuff like that. I've never had good luck with canvas. Um, you know, I've used aluminum, I've used steel kind of gone that direction but I stick with kind of what works for me and right now you know I'm, I'm into wood woods working for me uh, that's on solid wood right there I sand it down I routed the edges I would fill the sides all that stuff like that get it all ready and then even after I prime the top of it you know with whatever kind of base coat primer I'm using on it I still sand down that top base coat also and I just run my hand over it to make sure it feels like it's, you know, nice and smooth and ready to go. Okay, so, so here it shows me putting down all the colors. I don't really have a game plan, you know, sometimes when I do this. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But right here I was just, you know, saying, okay, well, let's try these colors out and see what we can make and see if it looks good. Um, you know, I was asked by a friend the other day, what is, you know, what is art, you know, or whatnot. And I told her, I'm like, you know, I think it's just lining up all the pretty colors and putting them where you think they look good at and making them look visually pleasing. So that's kind of what I think about it, you know. Uh, my style's a little bit different than anybody, everybody else's. I don't really go for beach scenes. I've never done a geode. I don't know if I ever will. Um, I kind of do what I like, you know, and my style is my style. Some people like it, some people don't. But it's just kind of like what I stick with because it works for me, and we'll see how it goes, you know. All right, so this will kind of show me starting to mix everything all up with the hair dryer. That's one piece of equipment you'll need to do this with. You'll also need a heat gun and then a blowtorch. And with the blowtorch, after everything's all done, you want to go back over the top of your resin and pop all the bubbles. Um, I check mine generally for about an hour to an hour and a half afterwards. I go in about every 15 to 20 minutes back into the room and, you know, just run the torch over real quick and pop it, pop all the bubbles. Uh, also, what I do is I take a scraper and I go along the bottom of it. When I say scraper, I just mean, you know, one of the bigger tongue depressor sticks that you use for mixing. Uh, and I scrape the bottom so the resin, when it drips, it doesn't, you know, ball up and get to where there's you know balls of it on the bottom of your wood that didn't sound right but you know what that's kind of how i'm describing it right there okay so it just shows me you know mixing all this stuff around uh pretty soon in here it'll show the peacock ink and kind of where i went over everything with that at uh it's a lighter color and then it turns out and it kind of you know looks gray when i'm mixing it in with everything else it'll be here in just a little bit in the video I did not like that peacock color ink mixed in with the kind of the stuff that I already had down on there. So that's when I started to kind of make some adaptations after that. It's a little while from now, but you'll see it here in the video.
Okay, so here is where I start to put down some of the peacock ink. And I was under the impression that, you know, it'd be kind of like a teal color. And I went stronger with the ink in my resin than what's actually recommended. But it kind of turned a gray color. So I wasn't really digging that. So I kind of made some adaptations and I changed. Um, and also the burnt silver color that I used for the pigment paste. It wasn't as brown as I really wanted it to be. So I had to make some adaptations and, and go brown here in a little bit. And you'll see it in the video. Um, just keep watching.
Okay, so since the blues weren't really looking the color that I wanted to to try to match up with that basket, um, I added some teal to it. And what I did with the teal is I had some extra white that I mixed up, and then I just kind of added the teal on top of the white and mixed it in. So it gave it a really, really opaque color. And then there's also some of the titanium white that I'm putting down the center right here. Um, it'll show me hitting it with the blow dryer here in just a little bit and kind of showing you know the epoxy moving around and just kind of watch you know watch this because it gave me some really nice cells I'll show you those in the picture at the end
So I would say so far with the epoxy candy products I've used and using this painting, I like them a lot, you know. Um, I'm still doing this voiceover and this is in the middle of the painting right now. I know there's more to go. But man, when you see the outcome of this and all the cells and everything, oh my God, it's freaking beautiful. It's gorgeous. Uh, and like I said, this is my style of art that I do. So, all right, cool. Talk to you guys later. Okay, so here's where I add the burnt peanut brown color. Uh, it is probably a little bit more opaque than what it would normally be, uh, just mixed in with the resin. What I did is I had some more leftover white, and with that leftover white, I just added on top of it and mixed it all in there with it. So right here, it just shows me putting that down. I wanted to match up kind of more the brown that was in the basket. I don't think I really hit it, you know, but it still looks pretty good in my eyes. So I'm okay with it right now. Okay, so right now we're a little ways into this pour. So I get the heat gun out because the epoxy's kind of lost its, I don't know how you would say, kind of viscosity movement of it, you know, so it doesn't really want to move right now. Uh, it's not getting tacky by any means, but it just, you know, as the time goes, it kind of starts to set up a little bit. Um, so with this heat gun right here, I'm kind of, you know, going over my lines and just blending them how I like to blend. Uh, when you put heat on these, and the epoxy pigment paste, it likes to kind of blow out and make little cells. Um, as you watch this video, you'll notice that I, I don't really tilt my board ever. Uh, most all the stuff that I do with mine, I just, you know, do with airflow movement and heat. I never really tilt it. So this will show you right here kind of how, you know, some of these cells will be formed. You'll see it in the video at the end. And then just keep watching, you know, you use this heat and the heat gun and kind of spread out your pigment paste. Uh, you don't really want to get too close to the resin with it. But then again, you don't really want to get too far away with it. It's just kind of a more of an experience thing, you know. Um, you got to kind of play with it a little bit and just, you know, do what you're comfortable with. If you start to see it move, then you kind of get it, you know, that's fine. Um, if you don't want to do it, you might not get, you know, too many cells that way um, I don't know this is just what's worked for me and I'm just kind of going off of my experience right now
Okay, so here we are at the end of the painting right here. Um, in my eyes, this is what I thought looked good with what I had and what I've done. So I just kind of stuck with it. So this will kind of, this next clip right here goes over all the cells and everything, just kind of a close up, just took it with my cell phone, you know. Just kind of went over top of it and just zoomed in a little bit and just kind of showed you some of the cells and some of the detail with it. And then there will also be some stills with more of the detail work that's in it also. So let me know what you think. So all in all, with the epoxy candy products that I've tried so far, I really enjoyed I think this came out rather gorgeous uh, with the cells and everything and then the pigments. And they kind of just float on the top. You'll see it here in just a little bit in the stills. Um, man, this lacing and the cells and everything. Oh, God, it's gorgeous. So, yeah, I give a big thumbs up to Epoxy Candy. Um, they're in the Midwest. You know, I'm from Iowa. I like to support things Midwest. Nothing against the, nothing against the Aussies, you know, the uh, Archie Creation stuff down there. It's, it's pretty badass, you know. Um, but this was here in America, and I'm like, well, shit, I can get it in a couple days instead of a couple weeks. Uh, so I gave this a shot, and man, I'm, I'm liking it so far. So I'll make some more videos on it, and I'll use some more of the products and kind of let you know what I think and kind of go from there. But yeah, definitely try out some epoxy candy products. Uh, I bought all my stuff. I wasn't endorsed by them at all. So I'm just a regular customer just like you guys would be. So here are some of the stills. Just kind of showing, you know, the cells and everything like that, uh, the pigment, you know, kind of how everything turned out. I think it's very beautiful. So just kind of going over the cells and, uh, you know, the stills. Took this with a Canon T6 DLSR. I think it came out okay. I'm a big fan of it. I'm liking it. So there's one with a flash and here's one without a flash. If you like how I've made this video and you like everything, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very, very much. Have a good day.